Oh my God. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are. Your favorite podcast, House of Herbie, your safe space for self-discovery and bad bitchery. Yes. Touch we me. We are... We can't, uh, we still can't reach our high fives across you, this table. Not yet. We got a brand new table. If you're not on our Patreon.com slash House of Herbie. so shiny. It's so shiny. It's a black and shiny, gorgeous table because we have a surprise for you. We have such a treat for you today. And this treat includes our very first drum Chip. roll, please. Our very first guest on this podcast. Oh, fuck. Pew, pew, pew. We are so thrilled to have a conversation with Miss Kelsey Wells, who is one of my most bad bitchery friends I have, is a fitness guru and all around like, I don't even, you know what, we're just going to let her get, show you who she is. And we, we get into this like really wild conversation about her turning point in life. Like how did she even become this person? Because if you follow her on her Instagram, you'll see that her transformation over the last few years has been pretty drastic. She has changed her life as a person. She has uh, kind of found her purpose, which is something that makes me very envious because she feels so in alignment with something that she's passionate about. And we just get into all of it. It was, uh, yeah, it's a fucking great conversation. It's very open. It's very candid. It's more, we talked about things I did not think that we were going to be talking exactly. about. Exactly. I was surprised and, uh, where we went with this conversation. Yeah, me too. And, and I that think was, it's something it was that. Fucking, it was so loose. It was great. Yes. I think time. our creatives that are listening can really uh, identify with this journey. Like we're talking about this character arc of her becoming her own hero in this story. And that's through a journey of like motherhood and then like having to figure out her identity. It, not just like her, how she looks physically, but also how she thinks internally about her body and how she's religious, liter- religious trauma, Ooh, religious trauma, girl. Mm. It's a, so whole... a lot of things that, um, you know, hit close to home for sure. For sure. So without further ado, here we go. We're here oh, with Kelsey. Oh, Wells. Shit. I'm so excited. I, we are so excited to it's have you. It's great to finally fucking meet you. Same. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I know you. Yes. But we spent an hour Nobody on knows her me. podcast already. So that's why it was, was so yeah. fun. It was really fun. And we, I, we just said this before the camera started rolling, but I told her we had this mutual experience where right after we recorded, we told our husbands, I feel like I actually met a real friend. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so glad that that's mutual because I definitely did. I went right to her and I'm like, babe, this girl is so rad. So oh. And I feel like we'd be friends in real life. And here we are in real life. It was really refreshing. Not just over the internet. Yeah, I was like, damn, this girl is like a boss bitch. And she, she you taught me so much about fitness that day because I was like, well, I've recently got into working out because he forces me. Yeah. And I okay. was like, damn, this is an essential part of being a creative person. Like you okay. can't physical movement. Yes. Of some sort. Like 100%. just wellness overall. It's yes. like, if you don't take care of your body, then who are you? And I was like, okay, well I'm somebody that has never valued this and who better to bring on to talk about it. I'm here. I got you. She's an here. Open book. And she's fresh from London. Yes. So I'm a little jet lagged and I will have to be honest. I have had more like spacey moments in the last two days. I've done so <laughs> many funny weird things i keep stuttering over my words so oh that's how just, i normally talk so this is going to be great okay well, that's perfect. what podcast we'll alex right is in. for he we'll, he cuts out all the bullshit like exactly. if we say anything we don't like we're like alex cut that okay great we'll pass around a couple joints and then it'll be like nobody ever <laughs> you don't want to see that you know <laughs> she, she has I something later do now. <laughs> she has other engagements she's in la for a short time only oh, so. okay okay that's right because you're not in la no, I'm actually based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, fuck How yeah. beautiful Dude, is that? It, it is there. so beautiful. It Stunning. is really You guys beautiful. need to come. You always we, take we pictures in front of like room. these mountains. Is that That's your my pr- front yard and my side yard? Like we walk outside. That's and my it's, house is the first no, mountain. No, it's really like beyond dream come true for my husband. Shout out we to. We both grew up underneath that mountain in different little towns. And oh, to cool. live there now is just, it's the coolest feeling. Like our greatest blessing aside from, you know, each other and our son. We feel like our home is like. Just a sanctuary. We feel like this, it was built in 1984 and we've driven past it a bazillion times, like the road and we never knew it was up there. And all of a sudden it's ours and I just feel like it always has been. Is your first weird, home but, together? Um, it's our second home that we bought, but the first one we both really didn't like from the get go. Isn't it? I was going to ask, because you, if you're yeah. saying this is your sanctuary now, like we've had several properties and we're like always looking for something Dude, more so first yeah. of all she has to like after about a year and a half she'll be like like i'll notice she just keeps like looking around and shit and <laughs> envisioning i'm like what you want just kind of looking or... around and i'm like ah oh, fuck here we go we're gonna be and then all of a sudden like, like a week or two later she's like hey nick 
you know. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, here we go. We're the moving. ceilings are pretty low in here or something that you you like can't structurally change. But this change. is incredible. Right. You guys are happy here. So, yeah. Well, you notice we the are. ceilings are higher here, so we're fine. A little bit. For a little high. while. Yeah. But still, the last couple of months, you started to have a little bit of like... Hey, Nick. So like every three years, she has really? to kind of like relocate. Interesting. Absolutely. I was seeing, watching a David Bowie documentary the other day where he was like, I ne- he never purchased a home, which is shocking because it's a legend and, you know, yeah. he had money and coins to You'd do think so. he'd have homes, you know? Yeah. yeah and like he homes. said yeah. for like him, yeah. he was such an artist. Like he yeah. was some, one of the most like eccentric people I've ever watched. And he was very much like, if I buy a place I want to move right away and I was like oh my god the first person that understands me huh. yeah and he just he didn't just, want to tie himself down yeah. he wanted to move constantly that. so that he could artistically do different I stuff I feel that way with tattoos okay I am are, do you have any tattoos I have two I have, you this, have two. Oh, little tiny guy okay which oh. is almost a year old it's in honor of my grandma who passed away a year ago and oh, then I have this tiny one which I don't know if you can see but it's okay, like a yeah. single needle tattoo oh. and that is um, Roman numerals of Nine one two thousand seven, which is the day that Ryan and I first said "I love you," which happens to be the day that we knew we were soulmates together forever. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, let's go! That is so epic. Oh seven, it's cheesy, but Jesus. It's cute. So wow. that's like okay. This is something we bonded over mm-hmm. because we've also yeah. had our our hubbies for a long ass time. Long yeah. ass time. Yeah, being wow, we could do a whole podcast with you about partnership. It is. It's. I feel like it's so rare these days to find that, and I'm just. I'm always Shit. grateful, but the older I get, the more grateful I am for him and for the fact that we grew up together and grew into yeah. each other through the years. and Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it changes, yeah, the aspects, almost every aspect of the relationship changes. And you guys have, you have one child? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't have kids yet. We just have fur babies. Your baby, just the baby. But that even that changes the dynamic of, it of does. things. Responsibility you know what I mean? comes into play yeah. and you're like, oh. The flexibility to just do whatever you want whenever you want. You have to pre-plan a little bit more. You have yep. to like arrange things. You can't just go places. You gotta fucking call people to do shit. Yeah. All of no, that. truly. It's almost just as much like logistically speaking, having a pet is like the same as having a kid as far as you can't go out of town without <laughs> okay, right, making right. arrangements. You know what I mean? Right, like right. it's Somebody's very gonna have to take care of it. Yeah, you have to be you have to think bigger than you, you know? Wow. Yeah. Hello. And how oh how old is he? He just turned nine. You just turned what? nine? I know. I was a child. That's a person. Yeah, yeah that's, and that's he's like, like uh, he's like up to my shoulder. He's tall. <laughs> I've seen pics. I know Ryan's six two, and his grandparents are all quite tall. Uh, my dad's six one, yeah. so I think Ryan's gonna he's gonna or Anderson's gonna be. Damn. He's always been tall for his age, and dude, it's every trip in fucking, my head, he's still four. You know that yeah, little, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That little boy. infant baby. Yeah. Uh, everybody we know from Salt Lake is like seven and a half feet tall. True. <laughs> really? Yes. That's funny. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. We let we stopped there on tour many times, and I was like, "What is this wonderful place? You need to come back just on tour. Just go to the outdoor mall and just stand there, and there's rocks and waterfalls, and yeah. it's clean. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> it's a rad place. I feel like people sleep on cool. Salt Lake, but I don't really want to spread the word too much because I'm like, right? Don't know there are too many people. It's a like, secret. Exactly. Isn't well, Post Malone out there too? Yeah, like a compound. Park City, yeah. right? No, he lives at the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon, which is up okay. by us. We live at the mouth of Little Cottonwood. Okay, wow. nice. Yeah. We've Beautiful. seen him driving around a bit. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Bowing around that. in his Bud Light. In his mini vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> it is fun being in LA, but it, there is like a fantasy I have of being somewhere more remote like that. That's just nature and gorgeous and yeah, where I we, can just meditate all day. Exactly. We don't, we're not in love with LA. There, we, there are certain aspects of it that are really great. It's still hard to find any city where all of the creatives are in one place. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But with that and with the... And the entire music industry came here over the last that's the thing five business, ten years. It just makes sense. Everybody's fucking here, but we everything is still online. Yeah. So yes. you don't ne- especially that's what you know the pandemic taught us. Like we can do almost anything Holy online. Shit, dude. So that's so inspiring for creative people. Yeah. I think a lot. I'm. I was uh, raised in a small town in Nebraska. So for me, and that was what now two decades ago. So it wasn't possible to do what we can do. Yeah. Now. I wrote something really sweet. So here we go. Aww. Kelsey Wells. Oops. Okay. Kelsey Wells. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a fitness oh, trainer. You can find her work on the sweat app. Mm-hmm. So I downloaded her today Ooh. and I was like, I'm starting a seven day free trial. Okay, bitch. Let's go. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. We need to suss out which program is going to be best for your goals right now. Whoa. Cause Let's I've been, that. I've been working out. I have now eight for... workout programs hosted there. Yeah. No shit. Most yes. of them are this power. They're like fusion. my kids. You know, so the most recent is Power Fusion. I just launched that like a week ago, 
And that is kind of a hybrid formatting between my world renowned programs, power, which is gym based weight training Mm. and power at home, which is home based weight training. And it's like they had a love child and power fusion was born. Is it possible to just work out at home? Absolutely. hundred percent. Yes. Yes. We may need to think about that. Yeah. I told you this on your podcast, but every gym that I go to, I'm like overwhelmed at the masculinity. Yeah. It's very it's disturbing for me. And I, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just bougie and picky, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like um, the energy it, is odd usually. Right. Yeah. And maybe that's just something that we're evolving out of as people. But you also say like the number one way to enhance your workouts is to be mindful of mm-hmm. every movement you mm-hmm. do. And I started being like at the gym thinking about my butt becoming mm, bigger yeah. and more gorgeous. Why not? Why not? And it's working, Kelsey. It is big yeah. and gorgeous. It's working. I mean, let's go. <laughs> and so I was like, well, that's my goal always is to is to be snatched. But uh, <laughs> what I was thinking is like, damn, if I could figure out, because now I've got the discipline down, I think. Yeah. I still hate it. I'm, I'm okay. very clear about this. Like I hate working out, okay. but if I could do it at home, that would be incredible. Let me finish the thing I wrote about okay, you. Okay. <laughs> the sweat app is, is lit. I signed up today. So you can do that. Uh, a week free trial and power fusion classes is your new thing. Mm-hmm. You're also on like shit loads of magazine covers, girl. <laughs> like she's always on magazine covers I looking mean, like I, a superhero. It's been a long time. I didn't have any, you know, since pandemic, I had like, I don't know, five. And then the pandemic happened. Then I had my first one. Women's Health Australia, and that was just February, November, February. Oh, we shot it in November and it came out in February. So thank you so much. That was like a big bucket list one for me. I love that publication, and the team was amazing. And it was like, I'm not the same woman I was four years ago, and I'm definitely not the same trainer I was. And so this one meant more because I'm like, I'm more myself. The interview inside that magazine it's shit that matters. They were really mm-hmm. amplifying my deeper message and to have like a tier one media publication that was willing to do that was huge. So thank you very isn't much. That, isn't that fascinating? So what so much, you know, we don't have to like, you know, get totally fucking in it, but let's get fucking yeah, in it. Let's get in that's it. That's why we're here, right? It, well, that's why we're here. And that's what we talk about all the time. Like the transformation of it all and the, the acceptance of the transformation and how fucking hard that can be most of the time. And yes. how much you want to resist it. Yeah. And, you know, all the things that go along with that. But what was, because the, the world, the, the pandemic really did change everybody, changed the aspects, everything about everything, really. And it made everybody go inward for a year yeah. and a half and just kind of deal with existential terror. <laughs> <laughs> and that figure your shit out or not put. <laughs> or some people didn't some people didn't figure their shit out and they just freaked the fuck and out they had to years. work out on apps yeah, yeah which exactly. is yes. that's a plus but what was like the biggest thing that you noticed that ch- has changed about you since you know in that those four or five six year time <sighs> damn the biggest thing it's been a lot i mean you know the state of the world aside like personally i feel like the last couple years have been wild and beautiful, but brutal. And I think if I could sum it all up, I think the biggest change within myself is awareness, mm. self-awareness, yeah. being more present. Yeah. That's your thing too. All the fucking shit. Listen, man, it's, it's, it's <laughs> such a wild, to. yeah. It's such a wild thing, and it was, we, we talk about this all the time too, but I, I, I always knew at some point this was going to be something that I was going to do a lot, you know, like meditating mm-hmm. and doing, you know, all this fucking shit, but when the pandemic happened, it was like, all right, yeah, I guess yeah. this is what we're doing Now's now. Now's the time. Go time. What Now's else am time. I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so, it, but it was an interesting, it was a really interesting time for us, because we also, look, I mean, there there seems like, an, and there, there's this through line that we always talk about too, like being successful while also sticking to your values, whatever those are, and, and, mm-hmm. and, and knowing that they're also going to change. Yes, shifting and, as you are. And then, yeah, as you are, and then still being able to be present with those things. Because I'm sure like with, with fitness, like everything else, and like music, there can be such shit shows of fucking entertainment-based yeah. um, horseshit you got to fucking yeah. weed through and deal with all the time. And trying to figure out who you are through that Yes. Can be you could get get lost in it yeah. all the time. And for me it was it was like I finally had this realization that because my messaging and my core messaging and my purpose for why I'm doing this. I feel like my career is very purpose driven. Mm-hmm. It's never something I plan to do. I always hated exercise, truly. 
Like I never exercised regularly in my adult life till after my son was born. I thought healthy eating meant starving myself or the latest fat diet. Like I had no knowledge of fitness or nutrition, wanted nothing to do with it. And I subscribed very deeply to so many bullshit, self-limiting beliefs that diet culture just pushed on me and just that I absorbed and then, you know, perpetuated within myself without even understanding. And it's like when I, from day one that I've started doing what I do, I've had the same hope and goal and message. And that is to help women understand, like, it's actually not what you think. Mm. Exercise can and should be used as a tool for self-empowerment. And deeper than that, fitness is about caring for your health. Mm. Your health, it is mental, emotional, spiritual, and mental, and physical. Mm. It's not just physical. Right. And we can no longer allow our efforts and exercise and eating to be a detriment to our mental health, to our spiritual and emotional well-being. And it's it's just not separate. And so it's like I've always understood when it began, it was because I began to understand that. And it was like this huge epiphany. And I was like, people need to know this. You felt there was an empty space. Yeah. I just felt like a massive like need to scream from the rooftops like we've been lied to. Yeah. You yeah, know, right, and right. and it doesn't need to be this way. And yeah. that's what the gyms are giving me when yeah, I go. And to that's that's why I'm saying it's completely gyms. valid because yeah. for decades, that's how it's been packaged <laughs> and sold and flung in your face. Yeah. And most and very gyms, masculine. Yeah. If, most if I had a billion dollars, still, I would develop because I'd also be afraid. We're starting a gym my, together. Right. Dude, if, if, if our gym <laughs> that was like mindful and feminine leaning, like it would probably fail because it, right now, the world is still trying tough. to catch up with your message. Yes. But. To answer the not. question is like, I, my, my messaging has been the same, but what happened in the last like four years, give or take, is I finally, something snapped in me where I finally was able to be far more unashamed about how I deliver that message mm. and just come right out and say what I need to say. And also have the confidence within myself that like, what is it that allows someone to be confident? Like, why are we waiting? What are we yeah. waiting for? We, I was talking to my friend and coworker just a few days ago, and we saw this, we were in the lounge at the airport, and we saw this lady wearing six hats. Like, she <laughs> bought it, she must have bought them in Mexico. She was probably coming home. She was wearing, like, all six. Already a different multicolored. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at her, we just both looked at each of her and each other, and I was just like, that just made my day. Yeah. Like, I love her. And, <laughs> and my friend Nicola was like, yeah, she gives zero fucks. And I was like, zero fucks? I'm like... I unsubscribe. Like, why Why is it that so many old folks are just living their best life and not giving a fuck what people think? That is why I'm not waiting till I'm old to do that. Right. Like, Thank I you. unsubscribe right now. And from now on, like, I am who I am. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I don't care if I'm weird. And it's like, I just realized you're never going to arrive at a place, no matter what accomplishments you achieve or no matter how many accolades or how hard you work, how much money you have, none of that is ever going to lead to you. Like I used to think that if I could check these boxes or do these things, then I would feel confident and comfortable, but it's obviously an inside job, which I've known, but I finally just reached a point the other day in my car where I was like, no, it starts now. Yes. Like, even if you know it. that it's the, the things you and know, only the you can phrases. decide. Only, only you, can de you can decide. We, even this podcast episode, only as you. delicious as it will be, is like we can't convince you, the listener, no. to do this. You know, no. to free yourself in this way. But that's because we. So we call it the fuck it stage. Yeah. Okay? Where the you get the six stage. hats. Yeah. Where you, six for hat. us, in six for, hats. For me, <laughs> that's going to be the code <laughs> yes, now. The best Are you thing six I've ever hat seen. today. <laughs> so. For us, the, the big thing was in the music business, so much, okay, most most entertainment things are run by a group of people thinking something is good or not, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of feel like you, you quickly learn that you're like this 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 slave to this other identity of whatever the fuck of this, this moment in culture where people say that's good and that's bad, mm -hmm. right? Whatever the fuck that is. And yeah. it's constantly changing and nobody knows how to predict it or make it. So for us, it was, we finally were like, saw all the things and we saw people say, this is good and you should do this and have it not work. People mm. who were supposed to be the people who knew how it worked and still the blame or whatever, the pressure still fell on us regardless. And they just went off and got to do their thing. And so we're like, okay, well, fuck this noise. Yeah. So you're telling me like we, we played it right and yeah. it still doesn't come or you're still not happy or you're still not satisfied. And that was... We finally start stopped valuing other people's opinions more than our own. Yeah. 
And that was a scary place. And that it's was so scary. And that's like we also read about all these fucking consciousness books and vibrations of different energies mm-hmm. and stuff. And that's courage. Mm-hmm. That's the vibration of courage. And that's a really hard sometimes can be a really hard place to get to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you're there, it seems like it's so, you know, so impossible where you were. You're like, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe I was back there. That's just wild. But it was such a we call it the fuck it stage because it's just like you finally let go of all the expectation and all the horse shit and just say, fuck it. I, yeah, I am yeah. who I am. And there's so much beauty in that. And you are the epitome of that for me. Let's I mean, it go. is. It's when I saw oh, her. her doing workouts to my song and it clicked for me. And I was like, oh, wait, like the bad bitches of the world need this. No, need it. only then when you reach that point that you two were talking about is when you can actually have real confidence. Yes. That's not, cause it's like fake it till you make it is helpful. And I, and I, I know Rihanna has a great quote about this. She's like, yeah, just like be yeah. that bitch. Yeah. Um, but until you reach that stage where you really understand like, Oh wait, maybe my entire industry of fitness, like doesn't, they're not, it's not it. Mm -hmm. There's something missing here, Mm -hmm. especially from like the feminine angle, like I was saying and the, and the awareness and the, it's almost like when you look at like spirituality and science, like they're always fighting each other. And it's like, no, like we want to be well. Yeah. And if you actually use your mind to focus on whatever body part that you're working out, it makes it less painful, mm-hmm. more sustainable. It's going to make you want to go back and do it again, which is what we need. You know, it's more powerful than that. Y- using your mind during that time under tension to amplify affirmations. Ooh, to using yourself. your mind during the time of tension. Cause it's for me, why I don't like to work out is it hurts. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> supposed like, to. I'm like, am I a wuss or is this no. like, does everybody That's have the, the pain? Absolutely is the point because how a muscle grows stronger, literally the fibers through lifting weights or through, you know, external force, whether it's body weight or whatever, the muscle fibers themselves are getting torn. They are breaking down, they're tearing apart, right? And then what happens is they build back and they're growing back stronger. And it's like the most literal metaphor for life. When you get torn down, when you break open, you have the opportunity to build back stronger. And when I realized that and becoming, you know, doing, you know, the school and becoming a certified personal trainer and all of that and looking into the science of things, it was like, it just affirmed on such a deeper level what I already knew and felt about my epiphany with like what movement and fitness should be for. But to your point now for me, it's like pushing myself and my body to that point of fatigue Mm. and pushing through that pain and Distracting yourself with affirmations is a really nice hack. Using those moments to reinforce truths that I've forgotten, Mm. it's exceptionally powerful. When you're lifting weights, when you're doing something uncomfortable in the gym, and instead of thinking, I'm weak, I'm not strong enough, this sucks, I want to quit, you think, I am strong. You think, I am powerful. And it's exactly what your music does for me when I'm lifting. Like, it... I need a good beat. I need good music. But so many of the songs that I used to like to lift to, the messages of singing those lyrics were garbage. Hmm. And that did affect me, I think, more than I realized. Wow. So finding music like yours that brings me both is so fucking cool and so empowering because it is helping me do what I'm doing in my own mind. Hmm. And that is connecting to the things that really matter and using my workouts as a symbol for my own strength, as a reminder of my own power and purpose. It's just Fuck for yeah. me, yeah, Let's the go. workout See, and the See, I've gym. never heard anyone talk about workouts that way. It can be an incubator. <laughs> I want, I want to go to the gym right now. I've been telling you this shit for 20 years. <laughs> and I just think the masculine approach is just so different, which is why well, I was it, like. it is. It I is. appreciate and your, I, and mo- I, your motivation is so priceless. And like Nick is our general. He's like I love our, it. You need that. But, he's, he's but it's also a very, general. And, and you got you now too. When you're, when you fucking, you know, we shit where we eat, where we're constantly <laughs> you don't work working with your together. You right? No. Okay. See. So we're constantly around each other, and it's just like a natural thing. Eventually, you know, I, I'm. She's not going to listen to everything that I say. I'm not going to listen to everything that she says. Naturally, yeah. over time, that's just how humans work. And we're you both stubborn I mean? too. Of and course. we're both Tauruses. What are you? Do I'm a Virgo. Yeah. You're a Virgo. I've got, yeah. Get out. Sun in Virgo. Moon in Virgo. Scorpio rising. Scorpio oh, rising. Yeah. There we go. That's what. And I my like. husband's a Leo. Oh, uh, that's such okay. a great combo. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, because Virgo, they're the caretakers, right? Is yes. that the caretaker sign? Yes. Well, yeah. you when you see her with a freaking headset on, leading like a hundred women in a workout, you'll see the Virgo. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. 
Like so, she's a superhero, but she's also like, you know, what was the clip you posted the other day? You're like, how to do your makeup and not not take an hour? You're like, no lashes, no liner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she just rocks it. It's I just, 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 I love it. Nope. Obsessed. There's a whole other story. I haven't even that, got but. through the little blurb I wrote about Kelsey. We oh are my gonna God. Get Go back to the beginning. Like, where did I leave <laughs> off magazine covers? And she hosts her very own podcast called Redefine Fitness, which is such a great title for what we've just been Which is how we got connected. About. Because I begged, I slid into your DMs and I was like, slid please, in. Please come on my podcast. Yes. You know, everything good always starts with a yes. good DM slide. Yeah. So I just, I just think you're so empowering and I love that you have like woo woo tones to what you do too, because that's just our Thank flavor you. here on house of Herbie. And, um, you, y'all need to follow her too, by the way, it's at Kelsey Wells. Thanks. How did you, is that your real name? Kelsey Wells. That's her name. What? And guess what my middle name is. What? Lee. Kelsey Lee Wells. I know. I love my name. <laughs> Are you guys? I always president? tell my husband, I'm like, Thank you for giving me my name. Oh. That's really good. My maiden good. name is cute, but it's just, I feel like this sounds so weird. I've never said this out loud, I don't think, except for to my <laughs> husband, but whatever. I'm like, I really feel like just as much as I feel like Ryan and I are just really one, like we're just really meant to be and we are whatever. The name is like such a symbol of that for me because I feel like Kelsey Lee Wells was always my name. Like that's my name. So wild. Like I feel more at home in that name than, I don't know. What was the maiden name if you, if you don't know? Bickmore. Yeah. Bickmore? Oh, Bickmore. Kelsey yeah. Bickmore, which is cute. Yeah. I love oh, I love that name, but I don't know. Kelsey Wells. I've had people Wells. ask me if my name was, was it's fake. fake. Yeah. Nickname. Okay, similar story. My name, uh, my government name is Amy. Wait, what? <laughs> which means, which means. Uh, I love that. I just call me. her queen. I yeah, just yeah. you can call me queen. Also, me Herbie means warrior. There's a bunch yes. of great. Me, uh, we love meaning. Meaning behind everything. We love meaning. I We're assign like, meaning to everything. Yeah. It's so good. So Amy means beloved, <sighs> and then Noonan, which is the last name I took from him, means beloved, which is Wait, so. Wait, what? How Amy cool. Noonan is literally beloved, beloved. Oh, that's beautiful. It's kind of lit. Could be worse. Worked out well for me. I <laughs> Worked love out well. it. But yeah, I, I like it. I like that. My my original or my maiden name is that what it is? Damn, Heidemann, which is yeah. super German, and which is a strong name, but it's just yeah. But yeah, Amy Noonan, you know, Queen it. Herbie, obviously. Yes. Choose your own name, folks. Beloved, beloved <laughs> Queen Herbie. Right. Oh my God, it's a prayer now. Put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> Let's put it on a T-shirt. Put it on a T-shirt. Put it on Gary. <laughs> Have him model it off. <clears throat> so how? So what was your turning point? Because you posted this like transformation thing the other day. And I was like, who is this person? Yeah. Wild. Who is that? I mean, people do that to me too. Cause I used to, we used to have a band called Carmen where yes. it was like in our, you know, early twenties, we were just so different. I mean, I can so see green. looking at pictures now I can see like the trauma mm -hmm. in my skin and everything. And now yeah. I just look so different and people yeah. think, how did you do that? Yeah. What was your turning point? Um, I suffered a full, loss of identity okay when i was 26 when i found out that the religion that i was um, brought up in wasn't what i thought it was mm. and for me for most people it's like a faith transition it's like a journey of sorts it's a struggle you know there's it's always a painful thing transitioning out of a religion that you once full-heartedly subscribe to or finding out certain things and it's usually some sort of an arc or a path and for me it was really like in a moment it was a jump off a cliff. <laughs> no, truly. I mean, I... We have plenty of religious trauma so in this listen, room, by the way. We're yeah, good. We, yeah. we can... This, that's, this, the rest Alex of the podcast are, is going to be religious Midwest, trauma. Midwest I mean, Christians, so okay, we have, Yeah, so you guys get it. But it yeah. was like... I really feel like I'm living my second life in this lifetime. Mm. Truly. Yeah. I feel so blessed. I feel so grateful. I feel like I... I was reborn, like yeah. uh, to use a religious term, truly, because I was 26 years old and I felt like I was and there and I had some mental health um, struggles that I don't think my parents were aware of that I certainly wasn't aware of until, you know, later looking back and figuring myself out. Mm -hmm. But the way that I practiced that religion was very much exacerbated in my own mind and very extremely obsessive and unhealthy to a point that even like my siblings who were raised the same way, they didn't, they don't, it wasn't to them what it was to me. Right. Mm. So it was kind of the perfect storm, but that to say to be who I am today coming out of that is nothing short of a miracle. Mm. And that was truly the catalyst for yeah, most people don't, don't make it out. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. congrats. Thank you. 
<laughs> and thank and congrats everybody to you, in this to room us, made it out yes, right i mean we survived well except i was never really in it <laughs> yeah right nick <laughs> you can leave was, i'm going Ryan, straight to hell yeah i'm driving the bus i'm just fucking total heathen <laughs> yeah imagine being raised by parents that are like brewing kombucha in the living room yeah. and doing acupuncture no and, way and, yeah and then they're yeah. like yeah i mean you can believe what you want dear like they sent me to they sent all of us to peace camp when we were 11 that years peace old peace camp yeah i gotta look inclusivity up wasn't even a <laughs> word <laughs> yet it's called cisv wow. children's international summer village yeah. wow that's pretty cool they pretty much just made us go like tend to to weed plants no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> come to find out all these years later <laughs> yeah right i don't know there was all this these cocaine fields Child I don't know. oh god <laughs> terrifying i mean hey any organization can be shady right of so course. that's like of course that's well, you start how to... i've healed my religious trauma is i was like you know every everybody's intentions are good at the beginning and then um humans yeah. fuck it up i like and, to believe that and, yeah. and i think yeah, yeah exactly sometimes yeah. it's really hard to and, you know, we experienced it. I, I, ex- I experienced it as a um, as like a co-pilot, you know, because totally. it was I was there for it. But I, I didn't you know, I wasn't raised with it. I didn't have all that stuff, right. but I, I could see the result of it. You Isn't know. it fun later, though, like post <laughs> post trauma where you're like, oh, wow, oh. this was my this is my arc. This is my story. Yeah. I am the heroine in this story. And now I get to tell people about it. Um, that's been a big thing for me because I was like, really, am I that girl that had to survive this? Interesting. I didn't see that for yeah. myself until I was removed and actually Nick pointed it out to me. Wow. And he was like, I think this is one of your things. Yeah. I was like, oh, damn. Wrote oh, a couple yeah. songs about There's it. There's so much power in owning your truth. Yeah. Everyone has a story. No one is getting out of this life very without true. heartbreak, it's a without movie. trauma, without life quakes that change everything, yeah. without suffering and grief. Yeah. And owning your truth is the single most fulfilling part of this, I think. Yeah. yeah. And that has to stem from love, right? Love for self, which is so easily forgotten or yeah. pushed to the bottom. Yeah. And it's like when you love other people genuinely and you can love yourself, then you can live a true life Yeah. in your truth. And like you were saying, that evolves. It's going to evolve. We're evolving. And as soon as you get used to it, it fucking (laughs) changes again. Yeah. But and also like all these people talk about this. I mean, Eckhart Tolle is like one of the famous, but like everybody the change usually comes from intense suffering. Yeah. Usually. Do you know what I mean? Like you usually otherwise you don't change. (laughs) Right. And you know what's interesting? Most I I mean, I'm not the first person to like talk about this. I think lots of people have realized this, but every hero and villain have the exact same thing in common Mm. a rough rough hard past Mm. they were victims but they're choosing to look at that differently and take two completely opposite paths interesting Mm. nice so you either you get to decide right like we are victims of a lot of things i talk about this a lot with my content it's like women especially men too but mostly women we are victims of diet culture of societal conditioning telling us that we need to shrink ourselves that we need to be seen and not heard that we like diet culture let me be clear as horrible as it is, and I could point to so many issues that are incubated in diet culture, mm-hmm. but I think on a, if you step back and really objectively look at this on a larger scale, diet culture is the single biggest weapon to keep women silent and small. Mm. That is what it is. Interesting. And it is time that we undo that yeah. and unravel all of those threads. But all of that to say, it's like you can't, you can't begin to do that unless you have some awareness. Right. And that awareness, I think, comes in two paths. First, that you are a victim of that. It's not your fault. If you've arrived at a place in your life where you hate yourself, where you hate your body, where you feel, you know, you're exercising out of punishment or mm-hmm. you have disordered eating or whatever struggles, that most likely is not your fault. Right. But... Also, it is your responsibility. Right. To Nobody do your can work do this to heal that. You. No one can do it for you. Yeah. I wish I could, babes. You, you <laughs> I want to. You're just being a people pleaser I right know. now. I know. You just self sacrifice and sacrifice. No, sabotage. it's true. It's true. And oh, God. I mean, the, it, seeing the differences of how male, uh, men and women are treated yes. in, in general, and, and especially in, in the US, and I can't imagine in, in religion, you know, that's probably one of the most patriarchal setup structures oh, yeah. that we have you know but it is and we talked about this with a ton of friends but even in music 
the way that um, mm. the the very big differences male, between female, male female artist is treatment just fucking oh, crazy. Oh man, like you look at a ma- okay, look at a male artist like performing in a music video. They're wearing like a t-shirt and jeans, <laughs> and these Nothing, women, no, like, no hair these is done. Goddesses are literally taking time out of their day, like hours, mm-hmm. to literally like glue eyelashes to their eyelids that's just one of like 30 yeah, things yeah, like yeah. not just that but like we like i'm a fan of all these things by the way like yeah i get it but it's um i follow this amazing uh blog called the unpublishable and it's this gal who talks about toxic beauty culture which is another whole category really mm-hmm. i feel like parallel with what you're it talking about so parallel where you're just like she was talking about martha stewart on the co- cover of sports illustrated or it was like a swimsuit issue, yeah, right? Yeah. And they were like, wow, she looks so great. And it's like, okay, but that's still, this is still a problem, y'all, because yeah. you're still saying that like somebody with all this surgical help and all this stuff is still like the only way to be acceptable is because we've made her look like what, mm-hmm. you know, fuckable or whatever it is. And it, she, she answers all these like men. It still comes down to the, to the dicks. Yeah. <laughs> she's so anyway, unpublishable if you're curious, because it is interesting to get that perspective and yeah. be like, oh, wow, who said that we had to do lashes and yeah. liner? That's, that's it. I actually did a big episode. It was actually like, I think right after ours on my podcast that is, um, talking about what I've had done. Mm. Like I'm asked more than I can count every day. Like, do you have a boob job? Like, have you like, but do you do Botox? Like, why aren't you talking about this? All these things. And I just sat down and I literally was like, Everything I've ever done, as far as everything from like how I do my nails to eyelashes, doesn't it to feel Botox, so good to just like it let does it feel off? So good, but the whole point of that and what I tried to convey is like really simple. In a nutshell, first of all, every woman, every human can and should do whatever the fuck they want with their own body. Period, period. and that does not need to be met with judgment from anyone. Right. Secondly, what is okay and what is healthy really comes down to your individual motive like for one person doing something could be degrading and like a form of Mm self-sabotage and for another doing that exact same thing could be empowering Mm -hmm. and a celebration of self Mm -hmm. or a self-care and it's like for me personally I had to start looking at everything that I did beauty wise Mm -hmm. and ask myself why Mm -hmm. where's that motive coming from is that coming from a lack Like I used to have, you know, eyelash extensions for eight years and it was really coming from this huge lack that I just, this ridiculously embedded insecurity. How did you identify that? You went Um, to get lash extensions one day and you I knew that it was a problem. No, like I, I got teased (laughs) once when I was literally 14. Okay. So it always comes from some fucking bullet. And I (laughs) realized, oh my gosh, I have these short, tiny, straight lashes and all of my friends have these long ones and it was like that day like I wouldn't go anywhere without having coats and coats of mascara I just was so insecure about my lashes and then it was like when I was pregnant when lash extensions were kind of like a thing and available to me and I got them and I just never took them off I'm like this is the answer this is the cure and surprise surprise of course it didn't help me feel more like better about myself and my insecurities just went into other things but I did not take them off you can't Can't run run. from it I know but you can still try and, and what, it's like, great, yeah, you yeah. should. And that's the thing. It's like, I didn't think that it was a big deal that I had them. Yeah. Because the, everyone's always going to have insecurities. That's not what I'm saying. It's not to live a life without feeling insecure, but it's right. to be honest. And like, for me, I knew that that was something I was doing and spending time and money mm. perpetually like instigating this insecurity. And then I just realized I need to, as I started to evolve in other ways, it just became very clear. Like, I need to get over this. I just need to face this. And I so took them off and... It was so weird at first and so yeah. hard for me. And then I actually was like, I love my face and it's okay if yeah. I don't have lashes. And like, wow, Happily it's actually married fine. And you know? a mom. Like, it doesn't actually matter at all. Yeah, and then I, I felt like I looked younger without him. And then I was like, what yes. was I even? But it's so weird how I couldn't see it. So yeah. it's like, for me, yeah. that was not healthy. Fascinating. But I speak about my podcast, how like getting a breast augmentation was like a very beautiful experience for me. One that I do not regret. One that, you know, and that might... People might be like, oh, this is, you know, an oxymoron. That can't make sense. You can't talk about self-love and, you know, natural beauty and t- fitness for empowerment and then also have a breast augmentation and also have physical fitness goals. And it's like, you absolutely can. Absolutely. Life is and not or. And it all comes down to being honest with yourself and being authentic and vulnerable and identifying what is your motive. Are you, is this love-based or is this fear-based? Woo. This yeah. awareness, that's that awareness. That's awareness. Why? That's so Asking why mm-hmm. is, and that's also a dangerous thread. 
<laughs> for us too because you pull on that and you might pull the whole fucking shirt oh apart. yeah and it happens and, a lot of courage. and that's happened and, and yeah. that's okay and then you just have no shirt and you're like oh fuck it's cold and then you get to either make or buy a new shirt yeah, yeah. you gotta go fucking Jeez. learn how to fucking like sew. how do you i find that so i find identity so fascinating so when you said identity crisis i was like oh what did you do because she's, it's exciting she's the queen to of, transform it's exciting yeah. to become i love something that new about and, you because you embody that in your music like you take on these bold and vibrant and just absolutely unapologetic yes. forms. Yep. But ultimately every single one of those, and I know that just from the little bit that I've gotten to know you personally is an expression of you Yes. because you are bold and authentic and unapologetic and you're choosing to express that in a multitude of colors and ways and personas. And I it's would, so cool. Thank you. I would love to see the world uh, everybody being able to just like change when they want yeah. to and for people not to be so shocked you know like yeah when I got lash extensions a few years ago I was like oh wow yeah I feel so beautiful like I finally have the long curly lashes I've always wanted but like the upkeep and all this stuff and then I one day I was like yeah my my lash extensions and Nick was like what do you what do you mean he didn't even <laughs> notice I was the <laughs> only person yeah. Way to call me out, bro. <laughs> and then I was like, why am I fucking doing this? It's so yeah. stupid. And it's funny too. I, I've always worn like false lashes and I've recently became allergic to wow. lash glue. Wow. Isn't that an interesting? So the universe also speaks to you in these different ways so. and started pointing out to me like the same thing. And I, I stopped wearing them. Sometimes I still will pop them on. I tried the magnetic ones, all these things. Yeah. But I love the way that my face looks now. And I notice it does. And maybe because I am aging, it's like less is more. Yeah. Yeah. And we love this for we women. Love this for like us. less is more as you get 100%. older. Let's make that a thing. Yeah. But also like like aging too. Like women aren't allowed to age. Yeah, it's insane. Just not. And you see all of these like these fucking Joe Rogan clips, and it's like he can't even grow hair on his head anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just <laughs> nobody. We're just no saying I'm already. You know, that's not saying any bald shaming. No. Yes. My point is like men can continue to do whatever they want as they get older. And it's, it's not a thing. Like you can continue to do your careers and women. It's like, if you, as soon as somebody thinks you're not fuckable, like it's over. Yeah. That is and, really hard. And I do hard. think it's for the first time in a very long time. It is changing right now. Yeah. I hope, but it, I, I, I do think, I do really think it is, but, or at least we're really attempting as a culture mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's a fucking slow. And that's embedded a, in the beauty culture, the diet culture that we're talking about. Yes. I write a lot of poetry and one of, my poems is literally all about that. Mm. And it just says, we go from growing up to growing old overnight. Mm. Like, yeah. I don't remember a time in my life where, like, when is a woman allowed to thrive? Right. Because I remember I needed to have a chest. I needed to get my period. I needed to be like these women. And then all of a sudden it's like anti-aging everything. Like at <laughs> what point? You know what Goosebumps. I'm saying? 25 like, and then you're just like, no. It's nope. super Goosebumps. sad. But either way, however you are, isn't enough. And it's not right. And that's the point of it all. Like that's the most damaging piece. Yes. And we just have to reject it. Yep. We do. Yeah. This podcast is all about self-discovery. We say self-discovery and bad betchery because it's like yes. the, the, the journey of how exciting was it when you were like, oh shit, this is not me. I have to change. Was You, you felt it like wasn't. it was overnight <laughs> or it was just like. It's still scary. Like it lots was, of crying. Lots so of. So I had. Like, if you want to hear the real deal about that, I did an episode. It's actually called The Day I Died, and that's not trying to be dramatic. Like, that's a very um, accurate description of that experience for me. But I that catapulted me into um, understanding what depression was mm. and experiencing for the first and thankfully only time in my life um, some real, real dark tough mental times mm. yeah. beyond anything I had experienced with my anxiety, which I've always faced. Um, and my husband truly saved me in every sense. Mm. Like he had the foresight to help me. It was my son and my husband. I mean, I was a mom. My baby was one. And I quite simply had to keep that kid alive, which meant I had to be alive. Mm. <laughs> and it was that, like there were some days where it was like, I, I was, I went into a phase of kind of like shock and just numbness and like going through motions and the habit that I had learned only a year prior, which was exercise and this whole epiphany. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke a lot in the early years of my career about how discovering exercise as a tool for empowerment saved my life. And I speak about my postpartum anxiety and 
um, struggles and all of that kind of stuff. But I never, until recently when I opened up about my religious stuff, was able to say how deeply I mean that because those habits that I had in place, getting up and moving my body, fueling my body with the nutrients that it needed, staying hydrated, getting sleep, like those simple, simple habits kept me here, mm. kept me sane. And they were like a link back to myself. They were the door that I was able to open to meet who I was. Ooh. That's wild. You got to get under the, got to get under the bullshit sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you grab like therapy or any other assists or you just gave it time and you. I still had a lot of, um, you know, in my head, if you went to therapy, you're a failure. Totally. totally. That's so too much. Sig- that's a religious yeah. trauma too. And- yes. And so I should have, yeah. Yeah. and I'm open about this too. There are a few points in my life, especially with my mental health where I should have gotten help, right? real help. Um, probably should have been medicated and I didn't. And, um, I just, I just want to reiterate every, anytime I bring up these things, it's like, you can't speak on this without saying like, if you're struggling, there is help and healing. Yes. You need to go down any path that makes sense for you. There's no shame in anything that you need to do. Yeah. yeah. It's all available. Please. To you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Please like seek the help that you need. There's nothing to be ashamed of about that. That is only brave. That is only bold. And that is only something to be so proud of. So, yeah. Yeah. Even in it, it's so wild. It it feels impossible. Like you're saying when you're in it at the time, it's like, you can't see through the, to the other side. It's Mm -hmm. so wild. It's it's like you're, you can't fathom getting better. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple, you know, times like that. And, and I try to think of what brought me out of it and it was time. Yeah. You know, time. and I also only recently it was time in you. Yeah. yeah. Your and, perspective, and your actions and going in like, because yes. you were saying all of these things for whatever you're trying to do, whether it has become ses- successful in whatever field. And ours happens to be very superficial leaning mm-hmm. whenever you, is mine. Right. Right. Exactly. It's 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 oh, whenever you're trying to the happiness is based off of that success. It will never be enough. Exactly. Forever. Mm-hmm. In fact, Usually the more you get, the less happy you feel. Exactly. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then it <laughs> makes, yeah, it, it gives a sense of panic. Cause you're like, well, wait, oh, I did, shit. I crossed off this box. I have this thing. Like, I spent when the am last I going to, when is the fulfillment? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> When's the happiness and confidence coming? Yeah, like, yeah, let's go. But that's always, but it's funny. Cause when you choose to prioritize your spiritual health, mm. your mental well being first, the other shit follows. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And that's something that most people just reject. And it, with me, I went through a phase after this where I just thought spiritual health didn't matter. Like I tried to like, I mean, I went every direction, right? Tried to be completely atheist, tried to Well, it's, yeah, especially after religious off. trauma. I mean, yeah, like, it was like, I just was like, that mm-hmm. surely doesn't really matter, right? But it's, it. What I understand now is it's like we are more, you know, like the age old truth. Like you have thoughts and feelings. You are the thinker of your thoughts and the feeler of your feelings. You are not those things. So you are more. And we are, I believe we are divine beings having a human experience. And whatever religion you worship through or whatever way you practice your own spirituality, there is more. And you, like whatever connects you to your higher power or your deeper self, That if you prioritize that, like coming up for air, the rest of it with health and wellness falls into place so much easier Mm. and people will work and work and strive for that like fulfillment and that peace in every other way but that. Mm. So interesting, You do it for you rather than the world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a whole fascinating because I, so I grew up a runner and a swimmer. Okay. Like was fucking, you know, super endurance, not super endurance, but like intense yeah. Yeah, fucking huge. workout shit. I made myself uh, run until I collapsed in a cross country. Dude, <laughs> no. Could you imagine having that kind of willpower? <laughs> not, so it's, it's yeah, it's always been the, I, I have always had very strong willpower to be able to I do I never those had things. that. So that's why I was like, don't but tell me to work out. We're different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can't relate to me. And I had to let it go eventually because I was like, bitch, what the fuck are we, what are we yeah. doing? It's, I, like, I was like, you know, it's good yeah. for you. And I was like, but it didn't matter. She was yeah. like, it was, 
it was the more you're I said producing it, my music and you're like, you're a pop star, bitch. Like you need to have <laughs> no, your shit no, no, together. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, well, not even that, but it's, it's beyond, um, it's, you have to choose, you have yes, to come to right, it on right. your terms right. and see for yourself or not or whatever. But it, it has been an interesting, um, I, yeah, it's been an interesting part of our relationship. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's a lot. I'm grateful that I found Kelsey because I was like, no, she gets it. I get it. you. She I get it. I 100 percent get it. So yeah. somewhere in that in that like tumultuous time, you decided to be a freaking fitness guru. Yeah. You just decided so you were going to be on the cover so, of magazines, or no, like, how God. did that happen? So basically, I, um, I used my degree, my college degree is in interior design. I was doing interior design. No shit. Yeah. While I, what? when I had Anderson, he was a big surprise, which is also something I don't usually speak on, but I was just, we were reeling. I mean, my husband was in school still working pretty much full time. I was God working full time and we found Perfect out we were time. pregnant Let's have a human. and I was just like, I was panicked. Yes. Yeah. Terrified. Jesus. Um, but obviously he needed to come and he needed to come then, but Long story short, it was like I began exercising regularly for the first time in my adult life when I was postpartum. And it was because I needed help. Mm. And my midwife, they, you know, pretty much at my appointment, they were like, you're not okay. After I did the mental health questionnaire. And I was like, I thought I lied on that pretty good. Uh, Like, because I was, I remember taking that and I was, I saw the numbers one through five and I was like, ah. I knew what I felt, but I knew how to cheat so that I thought that when they read that, they'd get away with it. Damn. And then, so them to sit me down and be like, you're not like at six weeks postpartum, your hormones are supposed to be kind of leveling out, doing a little bit better. And I was just not damn. And I remember just feeling so deflated because knowing you're struggling is one thing, but I thought I was hiding it quite well to everyone. Um, and they were talking about options and medications and therapies. And I was so freaked out from all of that stuff. And I was just like, there's gotta be something else. And she was like, well, do you exercise? And I was like, no, but what the fuck does that have to do with anything? You know, <laughs> like I'm have problems. Like, what? and she was like, you know, I can't promise you, but it might help. Mm. It might help you mentally. Yeah. And I was just like, honestly, I would have done anything. And so you may have never even got into this shit if it no, hadn't I, happened. For sure I wouldn't have. And I've told my son that. Like he is the catalyst to me saving myself and any help that I've ever lent to anyone else. Wow. Period. That's wild. That can't, stuff. can't wait to see what he does. He's so special. It's a big he's, adventure. He's waiting. a little he's like the wisest little soul I've ever met. Yeah. That's so Those bad. things that the, that part of the story for everybody's story is always the most fascinating to me to us yeah because it's it's always that shit that because um, our listeners are all like probably going through something right now yeah. and creatives yep. and all like healing we're like there's there's been this this awareness now in the new earth because we also talk about how like there is a new world now the old ruled the old world rules <laughs> <laughs> don't really apply anymore and yeah. we talk, usually we talk about just as like in the, the music business and how fucking much that business has transformed yeah. the last 20 years. But in yeah. everybody and in yeah. general, it's just how like in a pandemic was kind of the line in yeah. the sand of work. Like, no, we're in the new world now. So it's just interesting. Everybody's now coming to terms with all these things that they usually it's the things that you tr- you don't want to do and the things that you try so hard to resist that end up being the things that. And that's it. I still never wanted to change my careers. I mean, I started exercising regularly and it, it clicked. I had tried so many times. I mean, I had started exercise programs just to quit them a day or a week later, more times than I can count Same. along with the crazy diets. Right. But this time hindsight's 2020 and there was one differentiator for the first time in my life. I was exercising out of an effort to help my body heal instead of out of hate for my body. Wow. Yeah. And that was it. And I, and that's when that epiphany happened, that moment I spoke of. And so I started turning to studying to become a PT, not because I wanted to change my career. This was like my sacred little safe space. And it was just like my outlet and my hobby. And so I wanted to understand the science behind what was actually happening as my body like transitioned physically. And I felt like I had such an amazing grasp on the benefits that weren't spoken of. But if anyone was going to listen to me about that, I needed to know my shit. Mm. I needed to be a trainer and I needed to understand the actual exercise science. And I also wanted to create a program for postpartum. Wow. Because I felt like there was a huge need in the industry for something that wasn't about bouncing back or getting your body back, but it was about 
healing and yeah. safely I regaining can't your strength. I believe I, there is a huge miss, a gaping hole for that. Huge. It's yeah. a bit better now. I yeah. did create the program. That was the first program I ever launched. Is my postpartum power po- power post pregnancy. I saw that. Uh huh. But so it's so cool. Basically, even still, like I was writing it, and I kind of I started my fitness Instagram like a year into my journey, so it wasn't right out the gate. It was like mm-hmm. a year later, and people think that I started that account to like build a business and become a trainer. But I started that because it was right after I found out about the church, and I desperately needed a place that I could exist where people didn't care what religion I was, wow. where I could show up as my authentic self not even knowing who that was yet and just like make connections with other women, safe space, help women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it it was back in the golden age of Instagram where like you just grew, right? Like there were no algorithms. I would post something I'd get 5,000 followers in 24 hours. If it, if it got on that (laughs) explore page, you know, it was just like such a bizarre. Yeah. So I'm the first to say like that. And I was weird because I was the one on there in the world of Fitzbo not just posting the weird selfie, not weird. I mean, post all the selfies, but like I wouldn't just flex and post it and like give you a motivational quote. I was on there being like, my postpartum is so horrible. My anxiety is so horrible. Like I was talking about the big novel captions, like pouring my heart out and my truth out because I just was so desperate to, to do that and have someone be like me too, or to help someone who was where I was say like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how it all started for me. And then about a year after that, um, Sweat approached me and Kayla and I, Kayla's the co-founder, had become friends and she knew that I was writing a post-pregnancy program. And basically they were like, we're going to turn Sweat with Kayla into Sweat and we want other trainers and what are you going to do with that program? And I was like, give it to pregnant women. And they're like, well, let's put in the app. And I was like, why do you want me? Like I'm... (laughs) nothing in this industry and I don't have experience, but they just believed in me. And so tight. I guess the rest is history. It's like the career part. There wasn't actually a day where I was like, yeah, I'm switching careers. I'm going to be a trainer now. Right. It just kind of unfolded out of a place of my lowest, most desperate trials. Y'all heard that, right? Y'all heard that? It's true. But that's the magic to, to, to me. And that's, that, and that's fucking, congratulations. Thank you. That's Ooh, fucking tight. You, it's you really, it's really scary and really hard sometimes, but like there is, there are magic things that are going to happen that you can't, this is the big joke of the universe. You try to plan the whole thing yes. out. Yeah. You're this like, is and how then it's going to go. And then I'll be Kelly. Worsler. And then I'm going <laughs> to fucking, and then, no. I'll, yep, and then I'm going to have the house and we're going to be happy uh-huh. and everything. And it's like, no, this is not. Yeah. I never thought I was going to blow up for rapping. I'm so and I was this little girl from Nebraska no, and I was like so funny like so, this week I was talking to like a rap legend like I've been talking to this this rapper who you, is he got you on a song I can't even say what, what is yet, but I'll wait, tell you okay, after okay, I'm so sad. <laughs> and I was just like damn you know I just this little girl from Nebraska just had no idea yeah you know and he's so he's spiritual too so he was just like no you're that little girl is a beast yes. and I was like damn that doesn't often and she come probably from knew. she probably knew you were meant for more in hindsight probably like that the little girl versions of us were the fiercest yeah most authentic most unapologetic and that then inner- all of a sudden somewhere along the line you start to you know yeah get programmed get put in boxes you get, well, what happens is you get you society just breaks you down eventually yeah. I feel and like we need to start. The, we need to start like a society of some sort. I don't know why. I just anti- want to turn it into a cult. Anti societies. <laughs> I'm like, how do we? How do we get some acupuncture? We're going to start with this needles. little shot of Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. It's like I tell Anderson, that's my son. I I feel and my husband. And I feel so strongly about this, given our stories and backgrounds and where we're raising him. And my job as his parent is to obviously care for his physical needs, but ultimately. I just want to allow him to tell me who he is Mm. again and again and me to stand by and be like, yes, I believe you. Yes. Like I am his biggest fan and I will never try to shape him into anything. Yeah. Because imagine if the next generation arrived at adulthood and didn't need to spend a decade on learning the bullshit because they never forgot who they were. Imagine, you know, like if I can do that as a parent, that's my biggest Imagine the courage no, levels yeah. of that generation yeah. and it's bound to happen. I mean, if you look at our parents and their parents before them, like we have no idea the suppression no, and the struggle no. that they had. No. Right. We always say that cause we did a, an episode on black sheep being the black sheep of the family. And I was like, wow, one of the big, like the best received episodes we've done. And 
I realized like, oh, we're, we're the generation that is flipping it. We are are. the transition crew. So thank you for, I feel like we could do like three more podcasts with her. I'm (laughs) down. Your your life experience is already so incredible. We'll shoot them all right now. (laughs) In fact, the end. Episode two. Live from from NBC (laughs) Studios. I do want to say, I I just feel this like caveat coming. I love my parents. They're the fucking best. Period. Yeah. I have to. They I did to, their best. I have to say that out loud and, all yeah. the time because it's when you're so busy healing your shit, you're like, it's easy to feel like you're placing blame. Yeah. And that's the point. I'm, I know they did their best. I've never doubted their love for me. Correct. And so in sharing for a long time, I couldn't share my truth because of that. Yeah. I was so fearful that it might hurt them or people, whatever. It's not about that. No. You know, like, and, and I think that's a very important, powerful piece for people to claim. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You know, no, that's a really healthy place. To and be. and as Mag- again, easier said than, yeah, than done most time. of the time, yes. right? It always does. It, it is easier time. easier to blame. And as magnificent as you are as a mother now, imagine how much further parenting is going to get for the next generation. Like, like we can't even no. like our parents couldn't imagine. They thought yeah. they were giving us everything, and they were everything and they were. that they could, right? In, in the best ways that they knew how. Yeah. What a freaking amazing journey we got to deep, bro. chat through with Kelsey today. And like so many, we touched on so, ooh, I have like more. See, this is why we have guests. You Start popped show. our guest cherry. You Wait, are what? You are the first you guest are. on House no, of Cherry. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Oh my God. You you see, I just combined you both of the car. words. I am so honored. <laughs> yeah. What? What? We were guest virgins before right before now today because i mean the few episodes well, that i've listened to of you guys didn't have guests but i figured that i just hadn't listened to the guest one yeah well. right well now you you're the first and we will have many because we just weren't sure so i was honored. like we need it i was like this is the perfect first guest and i do want to say and i think you guys should leave this in the episode because i think people who are listening should know i rocked in here and we sat down and we started recording we don't have some outline they didn't sit down and say hey this is what we're going to talk about this is what we're going to ask you this is a very real, authentic, genuine conversation that went where it went. And none of us had any preconceived notions or topics or themes. And I definitely I think that's tried. the magic of it. I definitely tried to out, I like wrote questions down and I, like you saw, I barely got through my, I was like, let me talk really nice things about Kelsey. And I barely got through it. So because that wasn't you. what mattered, you know? Right. But yeah, like this is the best part. I think it's my favorite part of podcasting. Just like our conversation. We literally sat down and chatted and we then were like, we published. could talk for three hours. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Cause like you said, people are really fucking interesting and everybody, and this is what we try to always preach to people who are trying to find that courage to be creatives or to put themselves out there or whatever. But everybody does have their own unique story. Yes. Yeah. It's Own so it. beautiful. It's yes. so beautiful. Speak your truth. And thank you for giving us your time as you're not yeah. always here in LA. And we were like, you have to come to the house. Like I have yeah, this requirement I where I was like, it has to be in real life because this, yes. you can't really quite replicate it. it. Can't. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate this so much. Yeah. And this was like, this was in the trip before anything else, honestly, because I knew I had to come for something else, but I was like, Right after we recorded, it was like the next day. I was like, "By the way, I'm going to be in LA. Can we meet?" Yeah, I had it in my calendar because you were like, "I think it's my next trip mm-hmm. to LA." This is how, what we do, you know. We always yeah. make it work. So yeah, I love it. Incredible. Love it. So thank you again for tuning in to another spicy episode of House of Herbie, your safe space for self discovery and bad bitchery. All of Kelsey Wells' information, links, all the deliciousness that we talked about in this episode will be in the show notes this week. So we love you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.